SwiftUI lets us present an alert with an optional source of truth inside. However, it takes a little bit of thinking to get this kind of thing right, as you'll see. To demonstrate these alerts in action, let's look at the way we handle our resort facilities. Now, right now we have this resort view with information and we have this text here, which has a format of list type and for the resort facilities array. And it works well enough. You know, if I press uh, run on this code here, then select uh, Squaw Valley again or Snowbird, whatever, um, you'll just see family, comma, beginners, comma, and accommodation. Uh, we're going to replace that with icon buttons you can press to get more information and it will show a description of that facility when it's pressed. Um, as usual, we're going to start our way small and work our way up bit by bit. First, we need a way to convert facility names like accommodation or beginners or family into an icon that can be displayed. And right now in this application, this will only happen in our resort view. But ultimately, this kind of thing is exactly what you try and spin off elsewhere and make it its own little code. You can reuse elsewhere in your project if you want to. So we're going to build a new struct that understands how to hold the information for a particular uh, facility, accommodation, uh, beginners or whatever, all there inside it. So make a new Swift file up here, Swift file, and call this thing facility.swift. Uh, go ahead and replace its import with an import with uh, Swift UI. So we can use images here. And then we'll say a struct facility, which is identifiable, has an ID, which will be random each time, you don't really care what it is, but a name, which will be accommodation or beginners or whatever. Now, in here, we're going to have a dictionary of possible icons. So we'll say private let icons be a dictionary of, and we'll have uh, accommodation with the value of house, then beginners with a value of one dot circle, then cross country with the value of map, then eco friendly with the value of, it's a complicated one, leaf dot arrow dot circle path, then family with the icon of person dot three. And then that's our list of possible icons. So we say, hey, what's the icon for family? Bang, person three. We'll expose that neatly to SwiftUI by saying, give me an icon view, showing some view. And this will simply say, if we can find the icon for our current name, send it back. If we can't, there's a fundamental flaw in our program, just bail out. So if let icon name be icons of our current name, send back an image, with system name of our icon name. I'll pass in the accessibility ability label of our name and give it a foreground color of secondary. If that fails, like I said, fatal error, unknown facility type of name. So you can see this thing conforms to identifiable. So we can loop over an array of these things with SwiftUI, which we're going to do. You know, that's what the, the icons are going to pass into our resort. Internally, it has this big dictionary of icons attached to what they mean, cross country, beginners, and so forth. But then uh, this whole bunch of SF symbols over here I've picked out to more or less suit the right thing. Person three is three people, one in a circle, just getting started for beginners, you know, it more or less works out. This is all exposed to SwiftUI through this icon property down here. Give me the correct icon for you. And I'll send back a SwiftUI image from SF symbols with the correct voiceover description using our name. So it'll say beginners or uh, family or whatever. And then uh, that's sort of a grayish color. So the next step now, and we have this basic facility type. The next step is to create one of these for each facility inside our resort over here. Now, this is currently using a, a synthesized memberwise initializer because it's a struct. I'm going to keep that because honestly, it's not so hard to convert this on the fly. Um, we can just say in here, there's a new computed property called facility types, which turns an array of facility, our new object. And we'll do a say facilities dot map, map facility dot init. Now remember that the facility struct, which was made a moment ago, this thing has a 
ID being made for us. The only thing I'm going to pass in to initialize it is its name. What's the name of this facility? And so the initializer for this thing expects to be given one string name and it'll send back a facility. That's literally what Map is saying here. I'll give you one item from my array of, of, of strings. Here you go. It'll pass the initializer facility, facility to init some value, receive back facility. Boom. Perfect for our needs. And now we can use that inside our resort view. So over here, we have our little oops, our loop here, actually. This thing. Uh, we're having our uh, format list. We'll say, actually, I want to have a whole HDAC here of our facilities and do for each our resort dot facility types. That's the array of facilities we just created a moment ago. One facility coming in, display facility dot icon, the Swifty Y view, in a font of title. So loop over all the facilities for this resort, convert each one into an icon, and then display it. Um, I've actually used the font title modifier here to make the whole icons bigger. Um, we could have that inside the icon property uh, up here. Uh, sorry, up here. In here, below foreground color. Um, I'm not going to do that because it constrains this to create only one kind of uh, facility icon. Um, I want to keep it at different sizes later on, perhaps. So I don't mind having that elsewhere. Here to be large, over here to be small, whatever. Anyway, that was the easy part. The harder part comes next. We want to make these button, these um, icons into buttons you can press that will show an alert when tapped. And using the optional form of alert, this starts easily enough. We're going to add two properties, one to say, am I uh, showing the alert or not? And if I am showing the alert, what is the facility I'm showing inside it? That's also straightforward. We can say um, at state private var selected facility is an optional facility. And then at state private var showing facility is false, as you'd expect. But now we want to have this button down here that when it's pressed, triggers those things. So we'll do a button inside our for each where selected facility is whatever facility we're on right now and showing facility equals true uh, with the label of our icon, like that. Now we can create the alert code in a very similar manner to the way we had the icons, have a dictionary of key value stuff or accommodation beginners da, 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 with description behind it. So it's say in our uh, resort facility here, sorry, facility right, right here, uh, private let descriptions be a dictionary of, and I'm gonna swipe these names because they're exactly the same. Obviously the uh, key, the value changes here. Uh, so accommodation will have this resort has popular on-site accommodation. Uh, beginners, this resort has lots of ski schools. And then for cross-country, uh, this resort has many cross-country ski routes. And then eco-friendly, we could say uh, this resort has won an award for environmental friendliness. And then for family, this is crazy. Come on you, this resort is popular with families. Boom. So the same sort of thing, key value, key value, key value, all the way down based on the things we have in our JSON already. Uh, this, uh, where's our JSON file here? So you can see it's literally family, cross country beginners, use those keys to read into our dictionary, the correct description, correct icon for those things. So that's the same thing again. And the second part is that adding a, a description string sent back, again, very, very similar. I'll copy this var icon thing and call it var description. And we'll say if let message equals uh, descriptions of our name, then just send back message. Otherwise unknown for the type of name. Still not tricky. I recognize that, still not tricky. It'll return string, there you go. Still pretty straightforward, that's fine. But now comes a complex part because the selected facility thing we have in our resort view over here, this thing, is optional. It might not be there at all. And so we've got to handle it very, very carefully. We can't use it as the only title for our alert because it might not be there. We've got to provide a non-optional string. So we'll use nil coalescing to handle that problem smoothly. We always want to make sure uh, the alert reads from the selected facility here. So it's going to pass in 
uh, that unwrap to us into our alert closure. So we'll say presenting that thing and get the unwrap version inside our closure. Then we'll need no buttons inside the alert. So we get default of OK, dismiss the alert thing. So it will still pass as a facility, but we can basically ignore it. But we're going to provide a custom message, which is that thing we just made a moment ago, this thing. So with a message closure, and again, that will receive the unwrap facility to display the correct description. So, 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 so. Down here below navigation path, title, this title display mode in resort view, we're going to say, I want to have an alert. The title being our selected facility, question mark dot name. So use that if it can. Otherwise, just do more information. And this will always, always be there, but we're required to do it safely. We'll then say, is it presented? Well, it depends on dollar showing facility. And then presenting what to check and unwrap. That will be our selected facility. So if it exists, brilliant, give it its data. Now, we're going to get that facility coming into us to work with. We just don't care. We're not going to use it. We just don't care. Ignore it. But we've got to provide a closure to provide some buttons, which we're not going to do. So we get the default OK button instead. However, we can then say for the message, this will also get the facility coming in. And that's where we'll show the text of our facility dot description like that. So we're using the underscore here for the alert action closure because we don't actually care about the unwrapped facility coming in. We just don't care. We're going to have the default OK button. But this thing does matter in our message so we can read its new description computer property. Go ahead and press Command R and see how it looks. So I'll choose score value again. Scroll down. There's our little icons. I'll press this one button and boom, has lots of ski schools. And then this three people, family, and finally accommodation. So it works great.